Hey, what's up, IGN? It's Brian and Tom, and we got hands on with the Nintendo Switch OLED. Specifically, Tom did. You got to hold it. Uh, just announced this week uh, a brand new Nintendo Switch model, not the Switch Pro, not the big, you know, revision 4K 60 frames per second thing that uh, a lot of people were hoping for, a lot of people were rumoring for a while, but it is a new Switch and people are excited for it. And Tom got to hold it and play it. So, Tom, what do you think? Yeah, so I got to play. I got to play for, with it for about an hour. Uh, I got to play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Breath of the Wild, and some of the Clubhouse games, um, which are you know not like good looking games, but not that that last one maybe not the most like fanciful <laughs> of them. But uh, yeah, and the other cool thing was I had my original launch Switch with me also on at the same time running. Uh, so I got to directly compare Mario Kart and Zelda to this with the new screen. Uh, and it's really pretty. It's like clear as day, the improvement, right? You you look at one, you look at the other. The old Switch looks very dim in comparison when they're right side by side. The new one is very bright, very vibrant. The colors were like popping a lot more. And this was with the brightness setting full up on both of them or, you oh, know, wow. like I was comparing them side by side. Um, and yeah, it's it's just undeniably a nice looking screen and a better looking screen, better viewing angles to all that sort of thing. Uh, so I was really impressed with it in in kind of its titular, you know, what it's going for. It, it definitely delivers in that way. Yeah, that is definitely the sort of signature aspect of this. Uh, there are some new perks, obviously some new bells and whistles here, but uh, the OLED is in the title of the Switch, weirdly enough. It is a weird title for a handheld. Yeah. Um, did you find uh, that, so outside of sort of the, the vibrancy and stuff like that, there was just a, a generally more clear picture too? Like it just felt like less pixely? Because I noticed my issue with the um, the regular Switch, the launch Switch, and I believe the Switch Lite as well, is that sometimes like stuff like red uh, seems to look a little blurry. C certain col mm. colors feel like they're like a little bit, you know, smudged. How did you feel like looking at it or compared? So I didn't, I didn't have time. Unfortunately, we weren't able to record our time with it, that sort of thing. So I didn't have time to really get into the nitty gritty of like very granular comparisons, unfortunately. Overall, I'd say like just from like kind of a, a anecdotal standpoint, it definitely looked crisper, but also not so much better that I was like jaw drop blown away. Wow, I need to throw out my old Switch right away. It, it was a nicer picture for sure, but it, it also wasn't to the point where you know, like you said, this isn't a Switch Pro. The game right. itself that's running underneath it is the same game functioning the same way on the same, basically same hardware. Yeah, it, it definitely looked nicer, but it looked nicer in the way that it was a nicer screen, not necessarily like, oh, wow, it's so much, you know, like it's less jaggy or any of that sort of thing. And I, I'm sure people, once they, once we get a chance to like actually get it in office or you know in in our hands long term to really really dig into that people will be able to have more kind of quantitative analysis of that but at least on, on the surface it was the type of thing where i was like yeah this definitely clearly looks better and crisper but also not so much that i'm uh dying to upgrade right away necessarily now another thing that got uh, an improvement although uh, obviously not something you can really see with your eyes the same way you can with the screen or the, the kickstand which we'll get to in a second uh is the speakers did you notice like uh a, a significant sort of more pronounced sound coming out of the switch i never really thought the original versions had like the worst sound quality or anything it's not like you know old game boys or something but. yeah no yeah th and that's another thing where again i have to preface this with there are people who you know live and breathe and die audio quality and i am not an audiophile so i can't i wouldn't be able to speak to that sort of level of it but i could play the music from Mario Kart and then turn down the volume on the OLED switch and then play the music on my switch and compare them directly. And yeah, it definitely sounds better. It's not, again, world shattering, jaw dropping, massive improvement, but it is a noticeable difference where the, the sound coming out of the OLED switch just like feels a little bit richer, a little bit deeper. It feels a little bit crisper, right? It, it, mm -hmm. Again, not like that the original had, you know, was anything to sneeze at but like right. it, it yeah it's it's nicer and i personally am kind of always either played doctor with headphones so that sort of thing isn't going to really like uh, like sway me necessarily but for the people who don't the people who play tabletop it's a totally nice improvement 
Yeah, I think that's what's interesting about this model. And really the Switch Lite, if you think about it, it is focusing almost entirely on uh, the handheld side of the Nintendo Switch, right? The right. Switch Lite, uh, you know, famously removed any sort of TV outputs and basically got rid of the switching part of the Switch. And now the Switch OLED, uh, a lot of the real uh, sort of like kind of awesome new features about it are mostly uh, benefited to people who are playing in handheld mode. Um, one of those is the kickstand. Uh, again, I would say that the kickstand on the original Switch was not great, like a, a cute thing, a nice novelty. It was kind of a pain to pop out. I, I know a lot of people lost theirs. They had to buy replacements. It also limited the amount of viewing angles. This thing now feels a, a lot more significant, right? The new kickstand. I, I can't believe we're going in depth on a, on a long piece of plastic here, but this is where we are, right? <laughs> not great for the original kickstand might be generous. Uh, <laughs> it, it's yeah the, this new kickstand i i think what surprised me and the reason that it's worth bringing up for sure is because i was expecting this to sort of just be like a make good right like that you can't get worse than the original kickstand so this will be a little bit better but what i found is actually it's significantly better um it goes across the whole width of the switch and the hinges on it have this really satisfying sort of like stick not stickiness but like resistance to them where you really easily just bend it to the position you want and then it'll just stay there and you can put like force on it, you can shake it and it will not move. It can go almost entirely flat with that stand and then go all the way up to very, very vertical. So it's incredibly adaptable, it's incredibly sturdy. It The best, the highest praise I can give it is, I think if you have the OLED switch, you do not need a third party stand, which is something that was felt mandatory when you, when you had the old switch. So that's a, a really high bar, right? Like that's really good praise. Right, yeah, I, I actually had um, a, a bunch of different sort of like kickstand style peripherals that I bought, uh, cycled through here and there, um, tried to get the ones that would, you know, collapse and fold down and fit inside of my carrying case and stuff like that. I think right. when now that people are like gonna start to travel again, um, this is obviously gonna be awesome, you know, pop it out on an airplane or do the Karen at the at the party on the rooftop thing, whatever <laughs> you wanna do. Um, now, lastly, uh, a thing that I imagine you didn't really get to test out much uh, is that there's a new Ethernet port um, on the dock itself. Did you get to see the dock? Like the dock has like yeah. some slightly rounded edges and stuff like that to it, right? Yeah, I got to mess around with the dock a little bit and not functionally use it, but you know, I got to pop off the like removable back now and check out all the rounded corners. It seems basically just like a lot of nice little quality of life improvement-y things, right? Hopefully less likely to... Uh, get reports of like scratched screens like we did with yeah. those original hard edges, that sort of stuff. It's sort of funny though that like the LAN port arrives, but also we lose the back USB port for it and you could buy USB ethernet adapters anyway. So it's basically like they just plugged one of those in internally and we just didn't see it. Um, I, didn't, I didn't realize we lost the, the internal USB port. That's kind of a bummer. Yeah, there's still two on the front, but the okay. third in that back section is now gone. Uh, overall, I think the dock is, the, the best way to explain it is, if you're a person who mostly plays docked, this is not an upgrade that should really interest you. It's just a right. marginally better dock that feels like some some in-betweens. And that's sort of kind of my take on the, the OLED Switch as a whole, is if you're coming into this new, right? If you're coming into this fresh to buy a Switch, I think 50 extra dollars for a much better screen and a much better kickstand and double the storage is probably totally worth it. Like it seems, I don't think I would ever recommend the $300 version as long as you could afford the extra 50. Obviously that's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. um, but as someone who currently owns a Switch and switches between docked and handheld pretty frequently, 350 to swap or upgrade feels like a, a little bit of a, a further bridge to cross. And it's maybe not one I'm as interested in because the improvements right. here are very cool, but not necessarily, again, like world shattering mid cycle upgrade PS4 Pro sort of level thing that you feel like you need to have. Yeah, not I feel that like it's the, trying to be that. No, totally, of course not. Um, I, I'm totally with you on that. I, I feel like the 64 gigabyte internal storage is nice, but I mean, anyone who's been gaming on Switch for a long time at this point has an SD card. They're regularly dirt cheap. Amazon, you know, sells 64 gigabyte SD cards for like. $10 sometimes. Um, and so like, I, I personally have had like the 400 gigabyte one in my system since launch. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's nice to have, I guess, if you want that option, but yeah, I like, you know, I think all in all, I'm glad I got to talk to you about this because like, I, I'm, I am sort of on the fence about upgrading. I do know that you will be able to buy the dock separately. So if you mostly do play in, uh, you know, sort of TV mode, 
you can just buy that dock and don't even worry about the OLED. Don't worry about the extra speakers and the kickstand. Those things won't really concern you. But I'd say that, like, yeah, you're right. If you're playing a lot of handheld stuff, maybe you're, you know, you've had a launch switch from four four years ago and it's, you know, been through the ringer. The Joy Cons are loose and stuff like that. Uh, you could check this one out. If you haven't bought a switch yet, this is probably the way to go. But for everyone else, I mean, I think like maybe, you know, this is, you might have a sigh of relief here that you don't have to spend $350 this fall. Yeah, it's, it's, I think that's a good way to put it, right? It's, it's very cool. It's very tempting, but uh, it's not necessarily, it's not the Switch Pro that a lot of people were hoping for. And I think that that is just sort of like the story of it is either this is going to be a thing that you know is going to be worth it for you. Or if you're on the fence, probably you don't need it, but it's a cool upgrade if you can afford it and you don't mind that. Well, thank you so much, Tom. Uh, you know, you only got to play an hour, so we didn't really get to test the battery life. You didn't get to sit there right. and for, you know, six, seven hours and try to kill it. But Although um, they've said it's comparable, basically, right? So it, Comparable I, to the red box switch from like two years ago, right? Yes, yeah. correct. Comparable to that kind of revision of it. Mm -hmm. Which was somewhere between sort of like four or five and nine hours, depending on if you're playing Breath of the Wild or Clubhouse games, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, Tom. Uh, and for everybody watching, for all things video games, Nintendo, the Nintendo Switch OLED, and hopefully one day the Switch Pro, uh, you're already in the right place, IGN.